For most of us, the focus should be on purification. Come into the present moment. Let go of worry, fear, desire. Come into the body. Allow everything to be as it is. This is the sadhikalpa or sadhuna aspect of the teacher, purification. Again, we can see how the sadhikalpa and nirvikalpa aspects also relate to these two aspects. Sadhikalpa teachings are very important. They teach us to become sattvic, at peace. The nirvikalpa teachings teach us to go beyond the body mind, beyond name and form, beyond nama rupa, into the self, which is nirvikalpa, nirguna, devoid of objective phenomena. When the mind is very calm, very subtle, very pure, and naturally shines with the splendor of the self, it becomes happy and blissful. If we still consider ourselves to be body mind, if ignorance is still there, the structural aspects of ignorance are still there, the functional aspect, the dynamic aspect, has settled down. But the structural aspect, the belief on the body mind is still there. Um, when the mind is very, very pure, very, very calm, that's when the knowledge teachings really can work. This is when you get the stories of the Zen monks. The Zen monks who have been meditating and calming their mind and just living in the moment. Um, and they just walk through a village and then someone rings a bell, ding. And then at that moment, they become self realized Because that bell just triggered some wisdom. And if you drop wisdom, if you imagine wisdom like a, I don't know, a jewel, a diamond, if you drop it into the sattvic mind, the calm mind, if you imagine the calm mind as a really quiet, beautiful pool of water, where there's not a ripple, there's not even a single, single ripple of water, you drop a diamond of the wisdom into that, then it creates liberation. The wisdom teachings are very simple. They basically say, you are that. You are the pure consciousness. Everything else is, a, is non-existent. Everything else does not exist at all. The whole of Maya does not exist. There is no Maya. In Sanskrit, do you know the word for non-existent? The word for existent is Sat. And the word for non-existent is Asa. Often translated as unreal also means non-existent. Unreal and non-existent are synonyms. So when the mind is still, then it receives a teaching, you are that, you are the consciousness then liberation occurs at that moment. But if the mind is not pure, not calm, still desiring lots of things in the world, still deeply, um, deeply convi convinced that it is the body-mind, that it is limited and it's a limited entity, then when that knowledge teaching comes in, it doesn't work. It's like dropping a drop of water of wisdom into a pool of choppy, wavy water. It doesn't work, doesn't nothing happen. It just gets swallowed up and engulfed. The teaching falls on deaf ears. 
we say figuratively speaking, the seeker is not ripe. They're not ripe. What is ripeness? Ripeness is sattva, purity, stillness of mind. To come into the present moment. Let go of desire for it. When the mind is calm, just by hearing the question, who am I? Knowing the context and what that means to go towards the subject. You turn towards the subject, the ego kind of turns in on itself and disappears, gets absorbed into the self. Gets sucked into the self. It turns inward to the subject and merges into the subject. This is liberation only happens when the mind is ripe, ready, still. Ramana said he was ripe for self inquiry And he says if somebody is ripe, you can take it on faith that in their previous lives, they have done all the sadhana, they've done all the purification in the previous lives. This is why in the Vedanta scriptures, it always says, these teachings for those who are very pure in mind, who've lost the worldly desires. They still haven't, they've lost the functional ignorance, the dynamic ignorance. They haven't lost the structural ignorance. This is why you need the Upanishads, the wisdom teachings, insight teachings. This takes us to the self. We turn inwards. These wisdom teachings, when the mind is very calm and still and introverted, the wisdom teachings take the mind and turn it to the subject. You are that. What are you? You are the subject consciousness. The mind just says, Oh, am I that? And it just turns in and it does self inquiry for a moment. And then, then that's the operation. So the most important part of the journey, both are important, you need both. You need this twin teaching of wisdom and purification. But the bulk of the journey is gonna be purification. And when the mind is pure, the diamond is dropped in. The diamond, the pearl of wisdom, the precious wisdom is just dropped in and has a beautiful effect. Until then, the wisdom teachings will help purify us as well by telling us that we are consciousness, pure consciousness, pure spirit. Consciousness means spirit, by the way, in case you hadn't realized. Consciousness is this formless spirit. It cannot be known, but it's what we are. 